Okay, so we're back for part two here. Hong Xiu Tran is ready to take the exams, he believes. So he heads off to the big city. You couldn't just take the exam in the town where you lived. It had to be proctored, and they only offered it once a year. So you had to travel usually somewhere with a little bit more of a population. So when he gets to the big city, he bumps into a missionary. This missionary would be an American. Um, he was there, this was before the Second Opium Wars that we read about yesterday with the treaties. So it was still illegal to be a missionary. He was breaking the law by doing what he was doing. But he's going around teaching people about God and Jesus and the church. And um, his interpretation of the least, I keep touching my face, even though there's a pandemic. Right? Um, he keeps teaching people about this stuff. Um, and knowing that these Chinese people have no idea what he's talking about, this missionary made a bunch of pamphlets. Um, in the pamphlets, he had scriptures from the New Testament, the Old Testament of the Bible. But in with those scriptures, he had them in English and he had them translated into Chinese. He also had some sections that were just his own personal ranting and raving about things like Confucius, um, Buddhism, traditional Chinese ancestor worship, and other things like that. Now, this guy was of the opinion that the Chinese were kind of like living in darkness. It was this huge heathen nation that was just full of people who were lost and confused. And why were they all lost and confused? Because of guys like Confucius that kept them from knowing the truth and stuff like that. So it, this uh, pamphlet was a mix of Christian ideas and doctrines and also this guy's own personal opinion that was not very flattering of China and their culture and their tradition the very stuff that would have been on the test that Hong Xiuquan was going to take. Now, Xiuquan, he um, didn't have a whole lot of time, right? He was in town to take his test, take the exams. He was stressed, he was busy, he was probably scared, he was nervous. So he takes the pamphlet from the guy and says, thanks, thanks a lot, um, I'll check it out later. The guy was probably like, hey, can I come visit you? And the guy's like, nah, he's like, can I call you? And Hong Xiuquan is probably like, I'll call you, okay? Takes the, the folder, the pamphlet, whatever, and leaves, takes the exam. So back to the slides here. You can see all that. He doesn't think a whole lot of it. He goes, he takes the exam, goes home, and he takes that pamphlet. He doesn't keep it. He didn't throw it away or anything. And he sticks it on a shelf in his bedroom. No big deal. Leaves it there. Forgets all about it. Um, test results come back. He failed. So what does he do? Signs up for the test the next year, and he fails again. He goes home, he prepares, he studies for the test. Signs up again for the test the next year, and he fails. He goes home, he prepares, studies, gets ready to test again. He signs up again for the test. This is the fourth time. And this time, he fails again. So what does he do? Goes home to study and prepare? No. He has a nervous breakdown. Complete mental breakdown. Um, doesn't even make it home, actually. Collapses somewhere between where he took the test and where his home was. Um, some people help him out, take him into a hotel, put him up for a couple of days, try to get him better. They figure out who he is, where he's from, and carry him home or get him carried home by somebody else, right? And he's put into his bed at home in his bedroom. Um, while he's there, he enters into a delirious, hallucinating state where somewhere between life and death, and he's just, he's crazy. Like he's, he's just going through this complete mental breakdown. Um, in that process, he says he felt like he had a vision. Um, he felt like his, his spirit left his body and was up in the heavens. And while he was there, he encountered, um, I'll check my timer here, see if we're going to run out of time. He encounters a sort of a father figure, and this father figure talks to him and teaches him. Um, he assumes this is like, you know, the Jade Emperor or the Sage King, one of those guys that we talked about in the early, early units at the beginning of the year. Um, there's another person that's there with him, too, another spirit, another presence that is a brotherly kind of figure. He spends time with these guys and with his brother, and they spend time going around doing stuff like the brother teaches him how to fight demons and how to kill demons and gives him even a couple of special swords that he can use for fighting demons. And he's in this trance for who knows how long as he's recovering from the mental breakdown. Um, we'll go to one more video and I'll explain the rest from there.